Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ray casting in Roblox. So, what is ray casting? Well, ray casting is essentially the act of firing an invisible part. And I, I say part in this context to make it easier to understand, but we actually call it a ray. And it's sort of like a projectile which travels in a certain direction until it hits something. And this ray, it doesn't collide with anything, it doesn't stop the game from doing anything it, you know you, just, you can't walk into a ray for example it's just an invisible um, moving projectile which starts in one position all right it could be right here where the camera is and it could be instructed to go in this direction and it will travel in this direction until it hits something and when it hits something it will give us the information about what it is it, it is hit so you can sort of think of it as like a moving touched event that, that's always active but moving in, in one direction sort of the opposite of, of how a touched event currently works because with a touched event you're waiting for something else to hit the part whheras in this uh, example with ray casting you're waiting for the ray to hit a part. So it's the ray that is moving. So you can think of the ray as just being like an invisible projectile, like a bullet that's moving in a certain direction. And we tell the game where we want the ray to go using some parameters, which I'm going to show you. So how do you make a ray? Well, a ray can be cast uh, client and server, I believe. Uh, usually you use it on the client though because um, usually you're, you're building things like guns or click events um, so that's where we're going to use it today I'm going to put a local script into starter GUI and let me first show you how to create a ray it's very simple all you say is game.workspace colon raycast like this and this tells the game that we want to fire a ray so we need to tell it where to start. Where do we want to fire the ray from? So let's create a few parts that are going to help us visualize this. So we'll just create a part for our starter position. We'll call this start. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this as an example. We're going to make sure it's anchored and we'll make it green, right? Because it's the start. And then what direction do we want our ray to go in? Okay, do we want it to go in this direction? Do we want it to go in this direction? Well, I'm just going to move it over here. Okay, Th this is where we want the ray to go. We, we want the ray to start off here and we want it to travel in the direction of the red part. Now, it's not going to go to the red part. It's going to go beyond the red part. So it's going to go in this direction and it's just going to keep on going until it hits something. Okay, but we need two parts in order to tell the ray where we want it to start and what direction do we want it to go in. So that's what I've done here. I've created these two parts. So let's go back to the local script and let's input these two parts as our origin and our direction. So what we've done here is we've said, okay, I want the ray to start at this position. You've got to pass in a position, not an object. So we're starting at this position and for the direction we're just going to put this for now okay the, the finish part and what you could do instead instead of passing a position here you could pass an actual vector three and that will just be the amount of studs in each direction of x y and z that it will travel from the start position so what i like to do instead of saying the finish position in order to get the direction because this isn't actually the direction this is just the position of the finish point but we want to get the direction between this part and this part so to do that we can just subtract the positions so let's just create a variable here for direction and <clears throat> this will be the finish no we don't want code assist <laughs> the finish part its position subtract the start position and this will give us a vector of the direction that it's traveling in okay so it will give us this position right where it's looking at this part so it's saying this direction is where we're going to be traveling so now that we've got the direction and the start we have told the game okay we want the ray to go here but now we also need to give it a few more bits of information because we haven't told the ray where we want it to stop at. We haven't said, look, 
Stop when you hit this specific object. Stop when you hit a player. Stop when you hit the end of the world. We haven't told it this information. So we need to create something called raycast params. And this is almost like a table. It's a specific data type. And it has some details which we need to configure for our raycast. So for example, we have raycast params dot filter descendants instances and this is a table of objects which you either want to ignore or whitelist so if we were to put let's say we had something in the middle of our two parts here like a wall okay and our ray is going to hit this wall now perhaps we don't want it to hit this wall we want it to ignore this wall well that's fine what we could do is we could put this into our filter descendants instances like this and if you were to supply something such as a folder which had loads of different instances inside of it then if you were to pass the folder well it should include all of the children by default okay you wouldn't have to say get children because it would include any descendants of that item so we will just put our wall as the filter descendant instance and then we have to tell the script well do you want us to ignore or whitelist these parts and when I say ignore it will simply ignore it if it hits these parts if we whitelist them though it means it will only uh, finish the ray it will only trigger when it hits one of these instances that's what the difference is between ignore and uh, uh, and uh, whitelist but I don't think that's the actual um, vocabulary that we have to use I think let's have a look uh, ray cast filter type Okay, so it's include or exclude. So we want to exclude in this case because we don't want the ray to detect these objects. So we're going to set that to exclude. If you wanted it to exclusively trigger when it hits this object, you'd set it to be include. And then finally, you can say ignore water. So that will, if you set it to true, it won't fire it won't end the ray if it hits some water, okay, some terrain water. So, I mean, you can set that to true or false. It doesn't really matter. If you don't have any terrain, you don't have to worry about it. But this is our ray, and our ray will now be cast, and we will just add the raycast params as our third parameter. Now, make sure when you're typing raycast params, you're dealing with your variable, which is lowercase raycast, uh, upper p for params, okay, because you might accidentally say raycast params and it will turn to blue which is the data type we want the variable that we've just created okay so this will fire our array and we can store this as a variable and usually you call it raycast result you can call it whatever you like I'm just following how they do it on the Roblox docs and then how do you detect that your array has actually hit something well you can say if raycast results then if raycast results dot instance then print raycast results dot instance dot name and this will print the object that it hits now let's just open up the output and let's create a second wall okay now this time we don't mind if it hits this wall so we're going to just call it second wall and this isn't a part of our filter descendants instances table so let's see what happens here if I just go and, in fact, what we'll do is we will do a task.wait of five seconds here so we can see everything. If there's no raycast result, I'm going to print no result. And if there's no instance, then I'm going to print no instance. Okay, let's have a look and see what happens here. So we click on play and we wait for five seconds. So the ray should fire from here, should go through our wall and it should return a uh, second wall, but it does not. It returns finish because it's hit the finish part before it has hit the blue wall because it's traveling in the direction so that it will meet this part. And it just so happens that it hit the finish part before it hit the second wall because guess what? The finish part is in front of the second wall. So I don't want it to class hitting my finish part as the end of the ray because that's merely a visualization that we've made so i'm going to add the finish part and also the start part because why not 
to the filter descendants instances, which should mean the next time we fire the ray, it is going to instead carry on traveling and it will hit the second wall. But there's no result this time. How strange. Let's have a look and see why that could be. So, ah yes. So because we got the direction by subtracting the start position from the finish position, we only have a vector which is going to travel to this part. It's not long enough. The direction that we've passed to our ray doesn't go far enough to actually hit this wall because it, it goes to the length of the finish part because that's what we've calculated. So the direction has given us essentially the angle that we want to move in, right? It's a, because if we were to supply the start part, well, we could be wanting to move in any direction. By subtracting these two parts, these two positions, we have found the direction in which we want to travel. However, that direction vector is only as long as the distance between these two parts because we've subtracted their positions. So how can we keep the, the direction, the orientation, right, which is telling us to move in this direction, but how can we extend it? Well, what we can do is we can take this direction vector and we can turn it into a unit vector by saying dot unit and putting these into parentheses. And what that does is it takes the vector and it reduces the length of that vector in every single axis, the x, y, and z axis, to just a multiple of one, okay? So imagine the direction is, well, let's print it out. Let's print out what the direction is, okay? And then let's print out direction dot unit, okay? And if you type dot unit, it will say a normalized copy of the vector three has the same direction, so it keeps that direction. It tells us, it, it remains uh, the direction, so it tells us what direction we're gonna travel in, but it has a magnitude of one, it has a length of one. So let's click on play and see what happens. So we have our normal direction vector, that's telling us the direction. Then we have the unit vector, which is making it a number between zero and one, essentially. So what we've done is we've removed the magnitude, we've removed the distance from this vector, but we've kept the direction in which it's pointed. So it's essentially just a really, really small vector that's heading very, very slightly in one direction. So what we can then do is multiply this by an amount of studs. And then we can say, I want you to travel in this direction for X amount of studs. So we're basically extending the vector. So we'll just set this back to dot unit but this time we'll multiply it by 100. And that means it's gonna travel in the direction by 100 studs because we've brought it down to a value that's near one so that we can then multiply it by a distance, okay? So that we have an accurate distance representation. Yes, we could have probably multiplied this by 100, but it would have given us a huge vector and the ray potentially would have been traveling for thousands and thousands of studs, which isn't very performant, right? We only want it to travel for 100 studs. If you wanted it to travel for longer than that, you could obviously change that. But in this case, only 100 studs. And then what will happen? And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a task.wait of two seconds here, just to make sure these two parts have loaded in by the time we click on play. If you get an error, you might want to uh, check that yourself. And then click on one, uh, click on play, sorry. And uh, if we just wait, about seven seconds, you should see that the ray will fire and it should hit the second wall because this time it's ignored the finish, all right? It's still traveling in this direction because we got the unit vector, which has kept that information as part of our vector. By saying dot unit, we've just shrunk the length of the vector from the distance between these two parts down to one. And then we're multiplying that unit vector by a hundred, which is bringing it back out to around here. So the length of that vector means that it's going to be able to hit this wall, which it's done, and it's returned the second wall. Now, you can also print out the raycast result dot position. That will be the position where it ended up, where it hit the part. So if it has hit our second wall, it will log the position where it is hit. And just to show you, we can create another part and call it hit and we can say game.workspace.hit.position 
equals raycast results dot position. I'm just going to change these to task dot weight of one. And if we zoom out, you can see that the pink part has appeared at the exact position where it has hit the second wall. And you can see it still traveled in the same direction because we've kept that directional aspect with our unit vector. And if the wall hadn't have been here, it would have kept on traveling until it would have reached 100 studs and then it would have stopped. So you can see how this would be used in a Roblox game, for example, with guns. So the green part in this instance would be the position where your character is if you're holding a gun. And it would the direction would be based on where your, your camera is. And then, or where you've clicked, sorry. And then where you clicked might have been another player. So the bullet will have traveled in this direction. Perhaps it's hit a wall, perhaps it's hit a player. And then you would detect whether that Raycast instance is a player. If it is a player, you'd then fire a remote event. And on the server, you would deduct their health. And you'd potentially check to see if it was a, um, you, you do a sanity check to ensure that the player could legitimately injure that player with a bullet. Perhaps they're in the same vicinity, they're not exploiting. So that is how to do ray casting in Roblox. Uh, you get the direction, which in this, uh, in this example, I've calculated the direction by subtracting two positions. You could also just supply a vector three of your own like this. It's completely up to you. But if you want to specify the direction, I'd recommend turning it into a unit vector and then multiplying it by your distance. So that is how you raycast in Roblox. Let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe if you found this video helpful as well. Like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.